Oh, hallelujah. There isn't anything greater than God's presence. You know, that's a, the enemy loves to distract people from getting into God's presence. One of the things the Holy Spirit said to me, I, I, you know, we, right now we have a, we're seeing what they, there's a battle of a global reset. Amen. That we are in a global reset right now. We have entered this great reset globally. There's, there's the enemy attempts to reset into one world order. And the Lord reset in, to, into divine order. Now there's a difference between divine order and one world order. Amen. So God is trying to bring his body into a divine order. And again, he doesn't want us to miss anything and he wants to bless us. But there's many distractions. There's many areas where people have actually compromised and fallen out of position, out of divine order. And they've allowed the world's influence and the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life to mislead them. Where they actually begin to lose the trust of the Lord. Would you turn to Mark 4, please? Verse 13. Let's speak it together. And Jesus said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? And he begins to explain to me. He said, The sower sows the word, which is the word of God. Amen. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word was sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Not in their minds, even in their hearts. Listen, the devil can't take what you don't give him. Amen? These likewise are ones sown on stony ground, who when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and they have no root in themselves, and endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble, or they compromise. Now these are the ones... Sown among thorns, they are the ones who hear the word. But the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and prosperity, and the desires for other things entering and choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful, so it cannot manifest, it cannot grow. But these are the ones sown on the ground, on good ground. Those who hear the word, Accept it, bear fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixtyfold, and some a hundredfold. Again, these are distractions, the cares and distractions allowed by the individuals. Now, people can blame the devil. They just allow, the Bible says, make no place for the devil. Amen? These allowed by individuals cause delay, pause. Or causes a cease to reset the mind. One of the things the Lord is doing right now is he resetting the mind. Why? Because there's a global reset. And he's trying to reset the mind to follow along with him and remove the things that are the enemy's trying to reset. So what's happening right now is he's causing a reset of the mind. Now, or what we call the thoughts towards Christ that allow his plan to, be, to become developed and preventing the enemies from being developed. Many have fallen out of divine position and lost clarity and ability to discern in detail. And at this precious time, it's so needed. They're missing opportunities to advance. There must be a resetting of the mind of Christ daily. Now, I want to share something with you. Some of the spirit gave me. You can come sit down. He said the mind is the location of thoughts. The mind is called the, lo it's the location of thoughts. And there are thoughts that are present and there are thoughts that are past. He's trying to get us to a place where we are resetting thoughts of the present. See, memory is known as thoughts of the past. So that we can filter out 
all the bad memories of the past and nullify their power and influence and allow the good things of Christ to come forward to the present because it's the present thoughts that are changing things, not the past. The past thoughts will try to aff afflict you or influence you, but it's your present thoughts right now that is changing everything. As a man thinks, so he'll be right now. Amen? So thoughts, he said to me, the mind is just a location of thoughts. He's got a, you know, uh, how can I explain it? When you're in the spirit and you're seeing all of these things that are, it's like ripple effects of a, you drop a pebble and go, and there's so many things that happen at once. His language is towards us. He's got to put a specific language so that we can comprehend. So when he said to me, the mind, that's what he was explaining. Listen, understand this. The mind is just a location. Quit trying to figure it all out, what the mind is. It's just a location of what? Your thoughts. <laughs> that's it. Your memory is a location of your thoughts of your past. Amen? But he's trying to bring it to the place where the thoughts of the present have more influence over the thoughts of the past. So that's why he's doing a reset. Not only is there a global reset right now and everything. Uh, there's the battle of the, the one world order reset and the divine order reset. And which one whoever we cooperate with is going to be manifested through us. Amen? Oh, happy days. Hebrews 4. And what is the mind? It's the location of thoughts. So when we hear the word, the mind of Christ, what's the, the location of what? God's thoughts. Amen? Hebrew. One of the things he shared with me, he said, because the mind must be reset daily. Listen, when we gather together, when the Spirit of God releases something for us to grab hold of and put to practice, it's because He's doing a reset for the present. So many people are missing the resets of the present. Many times. How many times have you heard somebody talk about something that they heard at a teaching and, and you missed it? You thought, man, I wish I was there. Maybe you should have been. Amen. So what is he saying? Forsake not to assemble. That's not just to an organization. That's so that because we receive what God is saying now. That's what he's saying now. But people just think, oh, it's just religion. We just got to gather. No, it isn't. That's the carnal mind thinking. Trying to prevent the present reset of the thoughts for me and you. Not only that, getting refreshed in God's presence, amen, so we can overcome. Hebrews 4.11, please. Let us there be, be diligent to what? Enter that rest. That word rest also means peace. Hebrews 4.11. Is everybody there? Okay. Let anyone fall according to the same example of what? Disobedience. For the word of God, the words of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him whom we must give account for. <laughs> now, Jesus' words, when spoken from the written words, written, enters the soul and the body. It enters the mind. The location of what? Thoughts. To expose the thoughts, its motives and its intents of desire. So that there can be a reset to the mind of Christ. And the nullifying of the mind of the flesh. Again, when there's a reset of the present, according to the mind of Christ, the thoughts of Christ, there's nothing but peace. There's no torment. There's no fear. There's no worry. 
about what's going to happen or how is it going to happen. This is where he says, I will establish your thoughts. I'll establish your steps. If what? If you allow me to reset your thoughts of the present. Amen? And nullify the thoughts of the past. Psalm 16. Psalm 16, verse 7, please. I will bless the Lord who has what? Given me counsel. I love counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. Now, what's the heart? Your core of all your desires. So he says, I'm getting the counsel from the Lord. Amen. His counsel is from his words. His desires were redirected. So what he's saying, look at, I got counsel from the Lord. And my heart instructs me in the night season. In other words, my desires are redirected. I have now set the Lord always before me. What happened to him? He got reset. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be moved. Man, what an attitude. I love it. There's no worse first thinking on this one. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. In other words, I got dominion over it now. It's shut up. It's at peace. Praise God. He said, you will not leave my soul in hell. You know, some people worry about going to hell. If you're doing the right thing, you got nothing to worry about. Nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of what? Joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Again, his counsels from his words. His desires have been redirected from his heart. Christ is now in his sight. By resetting the mind or the thoughts with a perfect peace a fullness of joy, knowing that there are pleasures, revelations, and relationship, and prosperity available to him. That's all it takes. Simple cooperation. Quit trying to figure everything out, man. You know, we have then suddenly the carnal mind, oh, wow. People walk around with smoke around their heads instead of the call to glory. <laughs> Some say, man, look at that cloud. No, that's that's smoke, man. Isaiah 26. You know, that there's a three-letter word that loves to interfere. It's called but. But, 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 but. That's what we call a moped. Right, man? But, but, but. But the enemy always likes to put but. What he does to put but is he tries to manipulate. He tries to nullify, hold back, compromise. That the truth is, but. Eve said, but. Look what happened to her. She got butted out. Isaiah 26. Glory to God. Verse 2. <clears throat> Open the gates that the righteous nation which keeps the truth may what? Enter in. That keeps the what? Truth. You will keep him in what? Perfect peace whose mind, whose thoughts is stayed on you. Because he trusts you. So your, your thoughts are towards him and everything that you do, then you don't trust him. And if you can't trust him, he can't trust you. Trust in the Lord forever, not when you feel like it. For in Yah, the Lord is everlasting strength. For he brings down those who dwell on high. The lofty city, he lays it low. He lays it low to the ground. He brings it down to the dust. The foot shall tread on it, down, tread it down. The feet of the poor and the steps of the needy. A perfect peace whose thoughts are stayed because they've been reset on the Lord because they trust Him. So there must be a reset. Now this is where you got to be careful who you associate with and what you associate with. What kind of music you listen to. You know, I, listen, there's all kinds of music. Now they may have changed the lyrics, but the rhythm is what penetrates. You better be careful. Does everybody get it? 
Hallelujah. Romans 12. There's a lot of outer court music preventing people from getting into the holy of holies, the most holy place. You know, I don't think rap Christian music is going to get you into the most holy place. I don't think metal, hard rock Christian music is going to get you into the most holy place. There are things that will not get you into the holy place. And if it's preventing you from getting in the holy place, there's another motive behind it. Anybody can proclaim to be a Christian and put Christian words into a song. Does everybody get it? But it doesn't keep you from the most holy place. Does it bring you to a place to bring you humility and humbleness and surrender and reverence to God's presence? If it doesn't, stay away from it. There's nothing with encouraging music. I mean, there's some, you're not going to get in, you know, you're going to go in the workout room in the gym. You're not going to, you know, not going to get anything done if you get in the most holy place. <laughs> Although everybody in the building might get saved, praise God. <laughs> might be some deliverance going on. But... Hallelujah. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. <laughs> I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies of what? Living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your responsibility. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing or resetting of your thoughts. Amen? Because the mind is nothing but the what? Location of thoughts. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Renew is to reset. <laughs> reset those thoughts. What? To present. Remember, memory is the location of past thoughts. That's why they're called memory. They're not the location of present thoughts. But you're going to take out of the memory and bring them into the present. Amen. Romans 8. So we're seeing a global reset. And again, this fight is against, we know, it's the, there's a reset of Christ and a reset of Antichrist. But it's actually the reset of one world order under the, under the authority and rulership of Satan's kingdom. There's that battle between Satan's kingdom and Christ's kingdom. Now we know the end result. Praise God. But there's going to be many casualties before we get to the end result. Because if you're not in the battle, you become a what? Casualty. And people are not willing. They're allowing many things to take them out of position. God's presence isn't priority to them. It's just not priority to them. They missed a moment of release of present thoughts. We're getting a release of God's present thoughts right now. Amen? That's what this is about. We don't want to miss them. I don't want to miss them. I want to know what the thoughts of God is all the time. Hallelujah. What did I say to go? Romans 8. Anybody there yet? Good. Verse 5. What does it say? For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. Which is lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life or self. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. Wow. Which is God's word, his presence. For to be carnally minded or as a fleshly minded is death. And that should be sufficient enough. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is hatred towards God. For it cannot be subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh can never please God. Just so you're going to work. So there must be, it, we are resetting present thoughts of Christ according to the spirit. There becomes life. But those who set present thoughts of the flesh. Some may be stored in memory, brought up to the present, is death. The mind of Christ is the battle between the mind of Christ and the mind of the devil. Amen? 
Those are those thoughts. Those are those memories. You and I are the ones that have to choose which we bring forth up to the present. We have that power and authority. No one else does. Unless you're yielding to the voice of the stranger. Unless you're yielding to the voice of the flesh. What are you allowing? Who, what voice is leading is the leading voice of your temple? Is it of God? Is it of yourself? As a man thinks, so he is. So we know that the battlefield is in the mind. What's in the thoughts? So I says, cast down all thoughts and imaginations that will come against the knowledge of God. Well, they cast them down. But he says, look at first you must be obedient before you can fulfill this obedience. Amen? That's why the word says, make no place for the devil. Philippians 4. Philippians 4. Oh, thank you, Master. So, are we resetting the thoughts right now? Yeah. Yeah. If you're willing to accept it and believe it and put it into practice. Amen. We're accepting, God is releasing his thoughts of the present right now. This is how we've got to begin to look at these things. It's not just some kind of a Bible study. Amen? These are the thoughts of God being released to us. In the present. So we can exchange any thought that's offensive to God. And make things right. Anything is going into a reset. Listen, you're not going to stop the reset. But we want to cooperate with the right reset. Amen? So don't we, we don't miss opportunities. Philippians 4.4. 4. Let's speak it. Rejoice in the Lord when you feel like it. Always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be made known to all men. The Lord is what? At hand. Now let me ask you this. If you're in gentleness, are you being led by the Spirit? Yeah. So then the people are going to know that your response, instead of your reaction, there's something different with you. You cannot respond without present God thoughts. You'll end up reacting to the past thoughts. Amen. Hallelujah. Be, uh, verse 6. Be what? Be anxious for everything. No. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all of your goofy understanding that you had to figure out. <laughs> you don't have to. But it will guide your hearts and your minds and your thoughts through Christ Jesus. Brethren, Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate, which means focus on these things. What does it mean? Focus. Everyone say focus. The things which you learn and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be what? With you. Hallelujah. Don't allow anxiousness to steal your peace. But seek ye the kingdom of God as righteousness. And he will guide. He will guard your present desires. Your present thoughts. As you focus on those things that you've learned, stored in memory, that is light, truth, and associated with the presence of God. Amen? Ephesians 4. People that are anxious have a butt ministry. They butt butt all the time. Because they want things done their way and right and not right now. You know, everybody wants drive through. I saw a sign. I still see it every day. It's over here at the church. 
in, in Okoe. It's got a drive through church. I'm like, what? <laughs> drive through church. You can drive through, get communion, and give me a call later, you know. <laughs> Leave your prayer requests there. Oh, there's a donation bucket there. I can tell you there right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, at, at least there are some places. Listen, God has got an anointing on this house for a specific purpose and reason. It's deliverance anointing. It's so that you're to see the unseen, so that you're drive out demonic forces, so that you're praying against these things. Not every, not everybody's called to do what we do here. I mean, some of them are, but they refuse to. So God says, "Okay, well then, do this." <laughs> okay. I mean, I've had people, I've had pastors call from other churches saying, "Listen, I can't handle this person, but I think you guys can, because you do deliverance, and we don't do that here." Okay, send them. Well, I've had calls multiple times from other pastors. But thank God they're humble enough to say, you know what, we, don't, we can't do this, but, you know, let's, let's rescue this soul. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4, 17, please. This I say... Therefore, in testifying the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the fertility of their thoughts, having their understanding what? Darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness, but you have not so learned Christ. If you did, you would have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off what? Concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt, according to deceitful desires, and be renewed, reset in the spirit of your thoughts. And that you put on the what? New, listen, you can't put on a new man without new thoughts. Which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. You know, many people can try to fake it, but they ain't going to make it. Amen? They can fake it, but they will not make it. Renewed in the spirit of your mind or reset in your thoughts. Colossians 3. Verse 1. Reset. Resetting your mind. And what is your mind? It is the location of your thoughts. And what is your memory? The location of your past thoughts. So your mind is the location of your present thoughts. Amen? Hallelujah. Verse 1, let's speak it. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ is set, sitting at the right hand of God, set your thoughts on the things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden in Christ God, with God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him. Therefore, put to death your members or your memories, which are on the earth or associated with the earth, which is fornication, uncleanliness, passions, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. And because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the, the sons of disobedience in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. So if you're a Christian and you're still doing these things here, are you considered a son or daughter of disobedience? Yes. Yeah. Ooh. But now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. And don't lie to one another. Since you have put off the old man with his deeds. And put on the new man and be renewed in knowledge. Now, knowledge comes from God's word. Amen? According to the image of him who created him, where there's neither Greek, Jew, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, nor free, but Christ is in all and in all. Hallelujah. Again, reset the present thoughts on Christ. Put to death the past thoughts of the lust of the eye, lust of flesh, pride of life, or flesh. 
in Romans 7. The Lord is my healer and my deliverer. And if God be for me, who can be against me? Amen. Doesn't need to be present thoughts. Listen, it doesn't mean you're not going through something. Amen. Everybody's going through something. But the quicker you go through it is done by how you speak, what's happening. Amen. Where's your present thought? Romans 7, 13. Has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not. But sin that it might appear sin was producing death in me through what is good. So that sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. Is everybody with me? For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin dwells in me. In other words, the presence of evil dwells in me. Or those thoughts of memories and so forth of the flesh, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life, the old man is still influencing, trying to take over. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, that's the old man, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will to do I do not do, but the evil I will not to do that I practice. Now he's talking about his old life, not his new one. Now if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find in the law that is evil, that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members, my memories, warring against the law of my mind, my present thoughts. Does everybody see this? So there's a word between my present past thoughts, amen, my past thoughts compared to my present thoughts. There's a war going on between them two. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members, or my memories. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the thoughts, <laughs> with my, the mind, I myself serve the, the law of God. In other words, with my present thoughts, I now serve the law of God. Amen? But with the flesh, my past memory thoughts, I serve sin. Does everybody see this? So without the anointing of Christ, you ain't going to do nothing. You got to have God's presence. You got to be resetting all the time. That's why people compromise and go back. So listen, the enemy comes up and says, but that's yeah, okay. You can do this. That's all right. I bet you can only do this one time and you'll go right back to how good you used to be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or, you know, I've worked a lot of hours. I really don't really need to go and hear a present word. <laughs> or this, or that. All kinds of excuses. That's where you got to take your flesh and say, shut up. Take it by the, stick a sock in its mouth. Grab it by the throat and throw it in God's presence. Come on, you're coming with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> laws in the memory that battle with the present laws they take people out of position that simplicity of compromise will kill you amen uh, Psalm 119 Psalm 119 161 Is everybody there let's speak it Princes persecute me without a cause, but my heart stands in awe of your word. I rejoice at your word as one who finds great treasure. I hate and abhor lying, but I love your law. Seven times a day I praise you because of your righteous judgments. Great peace have those who love your law, love your word, and nothing causes them to stumble. 
Lord, I hope for your salvation, and I do your commandments. My soul keeps your testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. I keep your precepts and your testimonies, for all my ways are be for you. Hallelujah. And I'm going to close it, 1 John 2. So the battle, remember, is against the present thoughts of the mind, amen, and the past thoughts of memory. That's why battle is constant. It's constant. You know, we talk about breaking bad habits. You ain't going to break a bad habit until you replace it. Amen? You got to replace it. Oh, I need to break this. Well, replace it. You got to replace it with the present thoughts now. You got to make that confession. I'm no longer that person. I'm a new creation. What do you think the new creation in Christ is about? I'm a new creation in Christ. All things pass away. All things become new. People can quote it, but they don't exchange it. Amen? I don't understand. Everything's not becoming new because you ain't exchanging. You're still walking around living from the memories of the past, not cutting them loose. We got a wonderful prayer called Disconnect. Disconnect it, man. For it reconnects you. First John chapter 2, verse 18. Let's speak it. Little children, this is the last hour, and if you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. What did they come with? Doctrines of demons, deceiving spirits. They went out from us, but they were not of us, for if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest, that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I've not written you because you don't know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar, but he who denies Jesus is the anointed one. He's an antichrist who does not deny the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, if you heard from the beginning, now these are good things that are put into memory. Amen? Now you're bringing, up, bringing them into the present all the time. If you're bringing these things into the present all the time, you'll have victory all the time. Amen? Now sometimes it takes a little bit of time. So don't give up just because what you spoke didn't happen right away. Hallelujah. We're all waiting on something. God puts everybody in the waiting room. Why? You're getting ready to birth something good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to what? Deceive you, manipulate you, lie to you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you don't need that anyone teach you. How many of all want to be taught by the anointing or a man? Man, I'd rather be taught by the anointing, man. Why? Because he's bringing me present day Thoughts of God. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things that it is true, it is not a lie. And just as it is taught you, you will abide in Him. Glory. And now, little children, abide in Him, that when He appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before Him at His coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. Praise God. So, Lord, we thank you for your word, your present thoughts. Thank you for the release of your present thoughts. And thank you for helping us and guiding us and resetting our thoughts that they may be present and aligned with your thoughts. We repent for anything else we've done that's offended you. And we ask that you'll seal us Refresh us, renew us, and establish us to be sons and daughters that please you, releasing your present thoughts into this atmosphere. In Jesus' name.